All right, so I just started the recording. This is for our teaching and learning call on April 6th. We already did announcements and things because I forgot to start the recorder. So, but this is um, right before we start our beadwork demo. So hopefully uh, we can capture all of that. Uh, is it any better? Yes, yes, much better. Oh, that's, I, it, didn't, it didn't give me the option to change the microphone. It's just better. Yeah, uh, it, much better. Oh, yeah. Go. Oh, that worked great. <laughs> okay, let me just let me see if I can make a view presenter again. Okay. There you go. And how do I? Oh, there we go. All right. <clears throat> sorry, sorry for the. Uh, I've never used this before, so we'll see how it goes. I, I decided to just do a quick um, demo of the installation of of work to show how easy it is. Um, that, and. As a very, I can do a quick uh, rundown of some of the features uh, afterwards. I'll run through the slides and I'll do the quick installation afterwards because it's probably easier that way. Um, so to get it running, you really need to have um, Java 11. Uh, uh, it runs on Wildfly um, version 26, but uh, that just gets put in as part of the installation. Um, and, and as I say, I've tested it on, on Mac OS, which is what I have, and, and Ubuntu. I run it uh, hosted on, on Ubuntu, and I also have a game yeah, with that. I haven't tried anything else. Um, which, it's running on Java, so anything that runs Java 11 should be should be fine. Um, and it's, I just released um, version 4 of Beadwork. I've been sort of saving version 4 for schema changes, but that uh, it ended up being um, changes for this, this new installation process. Uh, Wildfly, it's Red Hat Wildfly, I don't know if you're familiar with it or even know about it. It's um, used to be JBoss, and they, they re renamed the, um, the open source community version uh, Wildfly. Um, and they fairly recently it's brought out a new installation process for, for Wildfly called Galleon. And it, it, it introduced with that the concept of, of feature packs and layers. And feature pack is, is a sort of a big thing, and the layers are, are subsections of, of a, a feature pack. And, what, and Java, uh, Wildfly is a fully compliant Java in the um, Application server, but that includes a lot of stuff, um, you know, clustering, um, EJBs, and uh, web services, and things as well. And probably most people don't need to have any services. So, so the, the, what, with the Wi-Fi Galleon thing, you get the option of installing pieces of Wi-Fi. So you can run a, a strips down down um, version. version. And, and, and um, um, it occurs to me. Some point, some I could actually actually recast the work as a Italian feature pack. Um, um, and then get the opportunity to use layers of feed work to install different pieces of feed work. But there's actually a lot of different services, and again, most of them are on board. So that's that was what was useful for me. Mike? Yep. Um, for me, the 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 sound is still very uh, difficult to hear. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's it's like it was before. Yeah, it was better, and then it's kind of degrading yeah. as time goes. Not sure, what's going on with it? Is it yeah, yeah, off the mic? Off the mic? Should we to change the uh, the microphone? I locked out. out. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't know what. Let me just get in and out. Let me just get in and out. Let me just get in and out. If I unplug the, the mic and microphone, it's used to talk to the operator's short shorts. See how that goes. I'll be straight back.
Um, hello, I'm back again, I think. Can you hear me? Any better? Yeah, that sounds much better. No static. Well, well at it the did moment. last time. <laughs> I know, so hopefully it'll stay non static. Yeah. We'll Maybe our fingers. Present, presenter again. Yep, there you there go. Do um, you want me to go over any of that again, or should I just carry on? Yeah, actually, if you could, because the static was so distracting, I don't oh, think okay, you really... Okay, so, so yeah, the, the, really, it's, um, let's say, we run on Wildfly. Uh, it has this installer, which has the idea of features and layers. And the, the features, the big the layers are subsections of features. And as a, as a uh, Java E application server, uh, there's a lot of stuff you don't necessarily need. So you can, you can run a strip on... Wildfly just by selecting a, a small subset of the other features. Um, and in fact, work runs on really only needs the uh, um, the, the the web service, the, the web server, and and, um, and and they use messaging. So most of the stuff isn't isn't needed. Um, and it, as I say, it occurred to me that I could use that um, installer. I read work as a as a uh, Galleon feature pack for Wildfly, and the different layers, the beadwork layers would be different things like um, like events or, or personal calendaring or, or whatever. So, that, so that's where I um, became release four of beadwork. Um, so when we talk about layers in, in beadwork, these these are some of the bigger ones. There's a lot of them, um, and uh, one of them I'll, I'll show today is demo all h two, which is a, a demo um, version of of the work with the H two database and um, a, a copy of Open Search and and Apache Apache server. But it's it, all of, all the services you need are actually downloaded and installed. And and then there's demo all which is the same, but uh, it would use Postgres, in which case you have to set your own Postgres database up. Um, the ones that is used um, just getting a public um, production uh, version up is the bw-public-b, which will give you public calendaring for Postgres, and, and it doesn't install OpenSearch or Apache DS because it assumes they're going to be installed as, as uh, real services. Oops, I seem to make bigger. There we go. Uh, and then a couple more that I um, uh, things like um, got channel uh, filters for for SHIB and and CAS filters and, and so on. There's a lot of different things, and you can you can add more than one layer, multiple layers. So you could do a public version with CAS filters and things of that kind. Um, so. I'll just show the, the commands for installing it. Um, and then at some point, I'll, I'll uh, go doing it. Um, there's not much to it, in fact. Um, install Java 11. You need to download Galleon, which is just a, a zip up um, package, which you can then run. So you um, download it, you unzip it, and then you would run it with this one command here. And this, this is a command to install. Um, install beadwork uh, i'll just quickly run through these bits this is the name of the feature pack you're installing and it's it's using the um maven uh, repository it doesn't need you don't need to install maven but it uses the maven repository and it uses uh, the all artifact naming so there's the you know the group the uh, the artifact name and and the version um and you name where you want it to go. I said verbose because you get lots of out. And and this is just the one layer that you need to install for, for the demo version. But here you might have a whole list of different layers. And then it should create that directory wildfly. Um, it'll have the, the application server, directory server, and, and so on. Um, then you start all the things up. And, and I'll, I'll get back and show you in actual um, is there's uh, um and then you open it up uh, I'll, I'll say i'll come back to that in a, in a minute and do that uh, just just to give you an idea of what beadwork actually um 
to ports. It's it all its life. It, we've really um, been uh, more about public calendars than almost anything else. I got my indenting wrong here. Um, so we've got uh, if you, if you install public calendars, you'll get an admin client which which lets you add and and um, date events. Uh, there's the public web client, which will be that, that. There's the public feeds. In fact, most, most places that run beadwork, um, most, most of the stuff is, uh, is consumed through, through feeds. They, they either embed a widget in their, on their site or they, their own thing. And you can download events in, in um, JSON or as, as ICANN or, or XML or various formats. A public submission client, which is um, allows in a university environment, so its it students can or, or non-administrators anyway can can log in and um, create events for approval. Uh, they're not absolutely complete as they need to be. The um, we don't let them put in recurrences and things of that kind. Uh, but an administrator will if you pick the thing up claim them and then some minor changes and then publish them. Uh, <clears throat> it also supports um, personal calendaring. So there's a user client that you can run and that personal group calendaring, um, it's uh, certainly the case that has had um, a little less attention late um, than the others, but it does work, um, it runs. Um, and so Beadwork fully supports uh, CalDAV, which is currently the protocol being used, things like, say, phone calendaring and things of that kind. So you can, in theory, run um, Beadwork as a, as a CalDAV server and, and connect to you know, the calendars through, through your phone or anything else that supports CalDAV, say, say the um, Mac top calendar supports it as well. Um, have, I, have I lost presenter status? So you can't get the next slide button. Maybe that's just in the next slide. Oh, okay. That's what, I just was the last one. That's right. It's, I, I was going around about adding something about the future features. Why don't I quickly, how do I uh, share my screen? It's this bottom button, isn't it? It's here. Uh, um, select window screen. Uh, I thought it was going to let me see them. And usually it'll preview the screen. Yeah, I'm not seeing one. Does it give me that when I um oh oh, it, oh it's in the entire screen. Let's try that. Oh oh, let's try that. Yeah. That's this. Let me try this and see if <clears throat> I think it's, uh, you know, let me show all of my windows. You see my screen there? No. Oh. Not yet. Still seeing the slides. Oh, wow. Yeah, I try to select and it doesn't it doesn't uh doesn't do anything. God. Um I wonder um let me let me uh hope I'm missing any new um 
window. I'm just moving my tab around and see if that helps. Um, all right. Didn't like that. Oh, here we go. Doesn't seem to want to just let me. Put a link like to it. the support um, article on what how the screen share should work. Yeah, I, I, I was reading it last night, and I thought uh, <laughs> I thought I I had uh, at least I'm trying. Uh, let's see if if. Uh, Which browser are you using? Firefox. It seems to suggest. I normally uh, actually uh, kind of thing use. Um, I usually have better luck with Chrome myself, but maybe I should try again. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um. All right. I'll I'll try I'll try Chrome. I do have Chrome. Let's see if it's there. Uh, I'll be back in a Hello, I'm back again. Let's um, let's see if I can. I made you presenter again. All right, let's see if this works any better this time. It just shows. Now it gives me even less choices. <laughs> it shows. It doesn't show. Uh, I wonder. Actually, you know what I might do is just do this. Um, uh, I'm going to try and just flip the the windows around and see if it uh, if, if I can just share the window I'm on. Let's try. Uh, cancel that minute. Um, where was I? Oh. Oh yeah. Share. Let's try that one. All right. Can you see my window there? No, I'm still seeing the slides. Are you seeing them now? Oh. Well, that's really annoying. Um, so for the screen share part, you were just going to walk through the install, correct? Yeah, I guess um, it was really just going to show how how uh, yeah, it's probably it's probably getting to the point where it's not worth. Um, uh, it's showing me the stuff, but it's all right. Well, let's 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 just go back to to that. I guess I'm not going to be able to. Uh, I was going to actually. Um, well, uh, um, just give you a quick run through of, of, of beadwork as well, but it's uh, it's going to be um, a little difficult. So let, let me go quickly. Uh, yeah, when when you run this, you can um, 
I presume we can share these slides with people um, afterwards. Yes, I can. Um, I yeah. can send them so if them. people want to try it out, that's that's uh, um, fine. The um, if you run it, it'll it'll take it'll take about three or four minutes to to run um, the first time you run it because it caches all the stuff uh, in your Maven um, local repository um, and and it'll download everything it needs. Um, next time you run it for the same version, if you if you do it more than once, it goes goes pretty fast. Um, and going through these step by step quickly. You need to set up Java Home. To, um, it seems to be needed for for, for open search. Oh, I, I don't know whether anybody has been paying any attention to um, the Elasticsearch slash open search um, issues that have been going on. Until this release, we were running Elasticsearch, but they they uh, recently decided to change their their licensing to something which is pretty unfavorable. Uh, open search is um, is something that's been put together by uh, Amazon um, for their AWS service. It's um, it's Apache two licensed and it's version seven point two, I think, of Elasticsearch, which is the last Apache licensed version of of um, Elasticsearch. So they took that. And they renamed every package and and redistributed it as open search. So it's it's essentially Elasticsearch, but not quite. Um, these commands that starts up the H2 database, that starts up the um, Apache directory server, and that starts up the open search thing. And then you just wait um, a little bit for the open search um, to get itself started up, and uh, you'll see something about the cluster going yellow. And at that point, it's it's um, it's available. And then you you start up um, Wildfly, which will uh, deploy all this. It takes only about, well, it depends on the size of your machine, I guess, but on mine, it takes about 10, 12 seconds to get to this, this point where it just is, at that point, it's pretty much up and running. And, and after that, you can browse to this, um, and that's, that opens up a, um, a, a starter page that we have that, uh, Gives you links to all the um, the major applications, the ones I mentioned earlier on, and you can go to say the admin thing and and log in as uh, yes, yes. There's more detailed instructions um, on the whole thing at uh, at, at this URL. Um, this is the actual index. This is the things you directly to the um, how to install it, um, but also you can. Uh, uh, there's more stuff there, um, and yes, I know. They said these, these are the various things you can you can fire up. So you'll see there's a link. I keep doing that, don't I? Um, to the admin client, and you can log in as admin. We've got a, a bunch of users um, in the directory server to test with. They all have the same password. Um, you can log into the public client to just use those. Usually, it's a good idea to create an event and then then go there and see it. It's Fairly obvious, um, and um, yes, so those are, those are the things. Okay, I can't actually share my screen, but uh, that's that's all I had. Any any questions? Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about how folks are using big work. Um, yeah, they using it for like their campus yes. know, calendars and things like um, that. There's, uh, yeah, the, there are a number of, of places running running beadwork. It's mostly mostly for public events, um, and uh, most of them run the uh, the the public client as as their main public display of of, of the system. I think um, Duke runs uh, something they built, which which um, takes input via a feeder or something, but most mostly it's using this. This this is actually uses um, XSL style sheets to to uh, um, create the the UI. 
and and it's it's very very configurable in in various ways um, um and, and and yeah and most of them uh, said will uh, get input you know stuff from the, uh, the the calendar system via the feeds they don't actually i mean this the 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 public client is is useful it's useful to have a a a, a presence that way but um departments like to have feeds showing the last you know the, the next the next 20 or so events for 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 their department or whatever though that say the arts department at yale for example does that kind of thing um and again i think most of them use the, the uh, submission client in one way or another to allow, allow um, the student population or staff to enter enter events there are there are a few I know using the um, the personal client, but um, they they're usually fairly quiet. I don't I haven't heard much from them. Um, and and I run um, a hosting service with um, currently um, two or three running in production there. So Inga is asking in the chat if it's possible to see what it looks like for the user. Um, is there maybe a URL you could paste in the chat that I could go yeah. to? Or well, let, let me show you. I was just thinking that that would be a, a good thing. I can give you, uh, if I uh, remind myself of the, um, the URL. So let's, let's go look at um, uh, Yale is probably a good one. Um, here's a URL. Um, this one is is uh, is Yale. And um, well, if somebody could get their screen sharing to work, you could go to that and share the screen. I could I could uh, drive you through it maybe. Um, but as you can see at Yale, they have, um, and we sort of adopted their look to some extent as as being uh, the one we're going to give people. And on the on the uh, <coughs> the left hand side, there's a navigation which um, uh, there's a, a at the top uh, are a subdivision of the sort of the uh, types of events. Um, and they also it find useful to have this listed by um, set of, of um, options because people like to see what's going on in the, say, the arts department or so on. Um, and by and large, uh, most sites are um, pretty much like this, perhaps a slightly different layout for the, for the uh, navigation. There we go, yeah. And you know, if you click on one of the events there, you can see um, um, a full display of, of the of the event. They're quite um, <coughs> Yale is, is quite invested in 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 beadwork, and the approach they're adopting is to try to get as much as possible into into beadwork um, to try and, and centralize. Um, the, you know the uh, events, so they're they're available to everyone through through the feeds. And there's one thing I didn't mention is um, is we have a, a sync engine, which is how is one way of getting stuff into. Um, yeah, you won't be able to log into them. <laughs> is is the way you get into is is the way you get events into the system from external uh, resources. Um, they have. Uh, a feed from I think it's uh, a Drupal um, system, and we're, they're also um, I'm trying to remember the name of the um, organization. It's um, uh, Campus Campus Groups. That's it. 
uh, there's a company called Campus Groups, um, which provides a service um, to organize what's that, you know, campus groups of students and things. And they, they produce calendar information and will be um, uh, absorbing that into beadwork. So it can be redistributed again um, out, out of the system. So they're basically using it as a central point for redistribution of, of events. And one thing that just occurred to me, since this is kind of on the website, it's sort of um, for public consumption. I wonder if maybe having beadwork on the Aperio.org site would be useful for yeah, um, events for the various communities. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's uh, no reason why why not. It, um, the, the, it's 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 pretty easy to get it up and running. I mean, it's it's, it's, um, it, it's only a few steps, and and even getting a a near production service up and running doesn't doesn't take very long. Probably the longest part of of the process is um, is the uh, the look of the thing. It, 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 but that's true of any sort of web presence. You know, you're you're talking about a, a good few hours of of um, getting it to look the way you want. Um, if if you if you um, if you keep it down to say just matching color schemes, then it's pretty easy. Um, and and some of the stuff we could change in, in the standard beadwork thing, we just change the uh, the logo and and the name at the top and change the color scheme. You've got something that probably fits in pretty well. Um, so we could do that. Long ago, there was some idea of. Um, Making it, uh, um, I don't know the, the terms in, in Sakai, but um, there was some some interest in, in making it the sort of um, a reference calendar system for for Sakai, but that uh, ended up um, really going nowhere. Does it have sort of a month um, at a glance view? Um, kind of this, uh, um, category click on, format. Click on the upcoming. Um, link at the top there this one yeah um there are there are various options um in, in the kind of view you have and in fact yale um just one as you scroll down you'll see it goes on a day by day thing um it, it it's and and we used to have the you know the perpetual scrolling thing where it would load more as it went on, they, they actually decided ultimately they didn't like that. And I, I believe a lot of things have sort of moved away from that idea because in reality, a lot of people just want to see what's going on today. Um, and But if you hit load more events, it just carries on going. Yale were not that, um, they, they did have a, a view that was, uh, that would say, show you the entire month. Um, they have a lot of events and uh, they they just felt it, it didn't um, it wasn't very useful, and so right. we, we suppressed it there. But yeah, you can have um, a weekly view, a monthly view, or, or whatever. Um, they just didn't they just decided they didn't want it. And if you if you click on one of the things, the best, the most, uh, I think um, uh, I don't know. The arts thing is the biggest by a long way. I mean performances, I guess. I don't know whether. Try that. See, just just you just click on it, yeah, and you see it, it, you get a sub view of that. I mean, if you scroll down, you'll see. Oh, it. Okay, yeah, it, yeah. The reason I ask is because the guide calendars that typically have that month. View oh yeah, and then you the, the, it to we did have a. Daily. Oh, oh, we do. It does have a grid view, but again, um, most places um, don't use that, um, mm -hmm. and it's not accessible from the um, most of them because it's just turned off but but there is there is a grid view yeah um, and and uh, for for personal calendaring that's that's a, the default is is you'd get um, a grid view um, and and yeah you can see if you go down to their listed by they have an open open that up it's it's the various departments uh, um, you pop that open, and the biggest one of those is the is the Macmillan Center, which is huge. Um, but yeah, you, uh, some of those have uh, their arts department is very big. 
um, I don't know what they call it. It's it's got a name, um, but uh, um, but yeah, that, that's that's essentially. It. If um, yeah, there's probably not a great deal in some of them. They have a lot of <clears throat> a lot of groups that could potentially add events, but um, uh, as, as is the case in most places, some are very active and, and some aren't at all. And as you see, I think you saw with one of the events we looked at earlier, you can add images to them, and they seem to be quite they, they do that. Either either uploading images or simply having a URL to 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 an image. Um, they have that there's a little map thing if you look at the where just just below the where thing there's a, a map um, link they have their own map service um, but it could also be a, a, a Google Maps URL yeah you probably hit the back button or something to get back to it but that's that's pretty useful for events. If if you um, we we uh, Beadwork allows you to um, manage locations, and so the the location entity itself has the uh, the the map reference in it. And then when you create an event, you you just search among the the predefined locations um, and add that. So uh, you can get quite a bit of information about a location, but you don't have to enter it every time. You just select the, the appropriate one. And after after a while, um, you don't you you end up not needing to add locations very often because you use the same ones over and over again. Very cool. Um, so does anybody else have any questions for Mike while we have him? typing <clears throat> I mean to, to um, expand on the Sakai thing I think it, it was um, I think there was an idea of using the the Caldav service and create a, a calendar what are they called in, in Sakai is it, it's not modules is it um, but they have, to, they have a lessons tool that has this, yeah, the drop thing. calendar in. But um, there was an idea of, of working together on, on doing that. But I, um, I think something else, I, I don't know, maybe it's time or whatever, but, but it, it never went further. It'd certainly be interesting to, um, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, I would need to explore that a little bit. But I think especially for the website, um, it would be nice to have this sort of format for the community events in all the various projects. Yeah, it's it's um, and and if somebody wanted to, I mean, the feeds could be made available. If somebody wanted to present them somewhere else in a different way, that's that's pretty easy to do. Yeah, I don't I don't know what I'll have to talk to some of the Sakai devs to see. Um, and just just while you're the thing there, was with the calendar in Sakai, yeah, I don't honestly yeah. know why they no, chose it. Was, it was it was a while back. Um, mm -hmm. it, while you're there, the, if you notice, there's an export subscribe um, thing on the just below the the top picture. There. If you click on that, this is how you create a feed. Um, oh, okay. So it's it's as easy as that. You select you you just go through the various selections. Uh, the top thing. Um, when it says a feed, you just get a URL, and then you get the form, the, the data in whatever form you want, and then you you embed that using you know AJAX or whatever. Um, if you click on widget, you actually get a, a piece of um, JavaScript you can copy and paste. Oh, there's a dog. And and then there's all the various the various formats that you can have it in. Uh, JSON is is one of our own. Um, it, it's just uh, you know it's it's JSON, but it's not any standardized format. Uh, and similarly for XML, they're both non non-standard forms. Now, iCal um, 
jcal and xcal as, as it says there they're all um, standard uh, forms that defined by those rfcs um, and it's going to be shortly um, js calendar will be which is a new json format uh, will be available and then and then you just say how many events you want to get and and so on there's the obvious things below and then right at the bottom you get that url that you can copy and paste into uh something um actually you know if you just copy and paste that and and, and um well why, why don't it change the thing to json at the, um, there and you'll see the url change there. and then copy and paste that url into the browser you'll you'll see what what you sort of get So it's it's sort of that easy to create a feed. And what you do is you sort of you navigate to what you want um, using the normal navigation, and then create that um, that feed. Uh, so you know, if you want a particular department, you would navigate to the department, and then then do the export subscribe thing, and it would give you a, a filtered feed for that that um, department. Very nice. Okay. okay. Does anybody else have any questions? I know I'm looking forward to the recording so I can share it with others um, who are actually hitting me up on Slack channels. They're like, where is it? Is it now? Oh my gosh, I've missed it. And I was like, <laughs> yes, yes it is. But uh, I will share the recording with you as soon as it's done. I should have. And yes. I'll share the slides as well. Yeah. If you want to send those to me, I can. And you can also contact them. me. I should, I should have put my email address in the slides. I, I forgot to, but uh, I think you have my email address anyway. So um, uh, I'm. you can send me questions about Please work anytime. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for coming today and, um, and sharing some information about beadwork. We really appreciate it. I didn't know much about it, so um, I definitely know way more than I did. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. And um, apologies about the, the big blue button stuff. I know sometimes it's a little glitchy, so, um, but we managed to, to drawn yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. so we appreciate you taking the time and um and hopefully we can get some more you know collaboration going on in between projects yes that would be um, good that would be yes a nice outcome so. all right well we only have about 10 minutes left so i don't think that we really have enough time to um switch gears at this point to look at jira's which is what we typically do if we have filler time at the end. So I'm actually going to just let you guys have about eight minutes back in your day today. <laughs> um, and we'll go ahead and wrap up now. But just a quick reminder that next time, our next meeting is on the uh, 20th. And we're going to be having a Xerti demo. Inga is going to be demoing Xerti for us. So that should be really cool. I encourage you guys to attend to that. And, um, and looking even forward ahead into May, May 4th, um, EDF is going to demo the new Sakai Meetings tool that they've been working on. So that should be really cool. That's a brand new tool that's going to be in um, Sakai 23. So if you're interested in getting a sneak peek at that, um, that's coming up on uh, Star Wars Day, May 4th. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending. And um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.